Hello everyone and welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel-Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting daisies in a jar and we're going to be having it so that uh, any level of individual will be able to create a jar uh, around their flowers without a whole lot of hoopla. And for those of you who don't want to use the trick and tip that I'm going to include, please feel free to freehand it, which will always work out best for those who are daring. So before we get started, let's just look at the equipment that we have. We have our cup of water off to the side. We like to provide you with two brushes. And we're going to give you today a little pencil and a little stencil, which I'm going to keep to the side here. We also have our spatula, which we use to remove the peels, our plastic apron, our paper towel, and our colors for today are going to be blue, white, black, yellow, and sienna. Now let's take a look at the project. This is what we're going to be painting today. It's a very fun, very easy, very simple painting. It can be done in a number of different ways, and I always like to include this. We're just going to be creating this particular picture, but you can add elements to your background that you desire. I'm just going to show you how to create the image that you see here. What we provide you with is an 8x10 canvas with the peels already attached or affixed. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to get started. I'm going to be using my little uh, standard brushes, little beat up brushes, but I like them because I feel so comfortable with them. Um, and we're just going to get started. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the background. Now the background has a couple of colors in it. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm just going to chuck some of that right down the middle. I'm going to be working at an angle purposely today just in case there are any brush marks that remain. Um, because I want it to look as though it's in that, that type of a street. Now we're going to take some blue, make some dark blue up in this corner. Just let that work its way down. Okay. And the white is just so that I could have a, a lighter blue in the middle. And we're going to take some darker blue and work from this angle. And as you can see, some of the brush strokes are showing up, which is fine. I just want it to be a darker value in both of those corners. And then I'm just going to work my way up. Let it mix in with the white. Streak the color like that. That's fine. Just add some more blue to this. Now the thing that I like to make sure I emphasize here is that we make sure that we cover all of the divots. I'm just going to stop for a second and show you what I call a divot. You see how the paint is looking a little spotty here and here? Those are divots. And what you want to make sure you do is cover those. So you want to make sure you use enough color and you want to keep painting until you cover those divots. Okay, just nice and smooth. And you also want to make sure you paint around the peels. You see those little edges? So you want to make sure you introduce color and kind of angle the brush in a way that covers all of that. So you're looking out for quite a few things here. This is a really fun, easy painting. I think this probably is, if I had to pick anything, the hardest part, which there is nothing hard about this painting at all. It's just taking your time, making sure you cover the surface correctly. So now I'm just scrubbing, letting the colors blend, making sure I catch those divots. And I also want to make sure that I keep my colors working the way that I want them to. So I'm going to add a a little bit more white here. It'll all make sense in the end. Sometimes the preparation and the time you take to set everything up in the beginning pays dividends in the end. Okay. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Get those divots covered. A little bit more color here, a little bit more white here, there, 
that works okay that's good for the most part that's good enough for the purposes of this video there's our background now I'm gonna take a few extra seconds to take some dark color and very slowly rework my corners because I want these corners for my painting purpose to be really dark like that taking a work from the top again it just helps with the image of the, the white and the yellow popping off for me so I'm just gonna take my time as I advised to be happy with that now I'm gonna clean off my brush put in the water I like to call this ringing the bell get that all situated there now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna let this dry only because I want to show you for those of you especially uh, the senior group that paints with our workshops our painting projects I want you to be able to understand what we're going to do with these now for those of you who want a free hand I'm going to verbally tell you what you could do you have your flowers so you have a general idea of where you're going to be pulling in your stems so I would say right around this area here is where you want to paint your jar and you can use your script liner brush and some white and you could just draw your shape of your of your jar and then just let it sit there as we bring in the rest but because I want to have a broader audience base and some of my customers and some of my clients they need a little extra help when it comes to certain painting projects so that's why I developed this if I put this on the wet canvas, it's going to stick up here and it's going to mess up. So what I want to do is let this dry, then I'll show you what we're going to do with this. So we'll be right back in a few seconds. Okay, we're back. It took me approximately five minutes to let this painting dry, dry enough. And I just want to emphasize this. This is not normally how we would work. However, I have a lot of individuals who depend on the peel off kits to help them and encourage them and make painting fun and easy while they build themselves up to be able to get where some people may be and some people may not be. But the idea behind what I'm about to show you right now isn't something that I personally would use, but I thought about it to help individuals who may lack the confidence that I currently have because of my years of experience. So with that being said, it's my job to help you as best as I can to make painting fun and easy. So I've incorporated or added this stencil and this, um, this paper glass plastic metal white pencil, meaning that it writes on all of those. And what I'm gonna show you is you just lay it down, you just very lightly trace around it so you can get an idea of where the jar is gonna go. And if you're not a steady-handed painter, it also gives you a little bit of confidence. Cause see, once you remove it, you have an outline to show you where the jar is. And again, for those of you who have the confidence and who want to just go ahead and freehand it, by all means, man, feel free. But this is to help those who need a little extra push. Without further ado, let's get right into the painting. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to be adding the stems to each of these flowers. So I'm going to make a little bit of green here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use this flat brush for these stems. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, take a tiny bit of blue. Mix them together so I get me a green. Oh, that's a nice green color. Let's just make it just a little darker. There. See, now I have my green. And then what I'm going to do is flatten the brush out. And I'm just going to pull, make it a little bit lighter, to pull some stems. So let's say right about here, I'm just going to grab it and pull straight through 
the glass, go all the way off the canvas. That's going to represent stem number one. Going for a little bit more yellow on this one. And maybe on this one, I'm just going to pull right in. Maybe have it cross. And there's stem number two. Come in. Get a little bit more green and yellow. And we're going to pull maybe from here and say right inside here. Go right across. And those are our stems. Now you could also take just a little bit of yellow if you want. Kind of dance some of that along the edges. Just to give a little bit of accent, a little highlight if you want. So just going to add that to the painting. And maybe put another little yellow here. Maybe come right across here with that. See, now we have our stems, a little bit of highlight on them. Those are ready. I'm going to take our script liner brush, put a little water on it, twirl it into the paper towel, keeping it at a point. Now I'm just going to twirl into some black. I want it to be a little bit more liquefied, just a little bit. Because I want to be able to pull a bunch of baby breath stems. So we know that the jar is already here because we have the outline. So you see how I'm pulling everything within that. And you see how this kind of acts as an aid. We haven't painted the jar yet. But at least we know where it is. So let's say right up in here. I'm just going to pull down a little stem. And then maybe... Let's just pull another one before we start adding the little pieces. There's another one that goes right over here. Like that. And maybe there's another one that's right over here. Like that. And then maybe right over here there's another one that goes right like that. It's a little awkward, but we'll fix that. And now I'm just going to add some little branches to it. Like that. And maybe up here, there's a bunch of little branches. They kind of go like this. And then maybe there's even some branches for one that's over here. That kind of goes like this. Cut across this one a little bit. This one over here, we have a few that are sticking like this. And then maybe there's even some that's over here like this. And then don't forget the ones that we did back here. Let's do an offshoot. Just branches that stick up like that. Now, what those are going to represent is where our baby breaths are going to go. And what we're going to do for the baby breaths is just take some white and just start making a series of dots right over some of this black stuff. Now, the cool thing about this, since it's a painting, you don't have to have branches everywhere. You could paint like there. See, there was no branch there. You could put one here and then you could put another one here. So you get to put as many or as few of these baby breaths near or around the branch that you want. You could just make a cluster. Maybe there's some that stick up over here. So now all I'm doing is adding some little dots of decoration, baby breaths if you will, that are just cluttered all around this flower. See that? Maybe there's a bunch that stick off over here. And we could come back and add branches to that later if we want. To show you what I mean, you could stick some up in the sky over here and then come back and pull some branches to that later. So you're not, you're not limited to anything. So even if you make a mistake and put a dot somewhere that you didn't mean to, so what? Come back later and add a branch or two to it. So you have to do, you're the artist. Be an artist. Be creative. Have fun. Push around a few colors. Don't worry so much about being precise. Worry more about having fun, being creative. And trust me when I tell you, it's the best feeling in the world to just see some things come to life. 
You just make sure some of these are like big and odd shaped. Don't make them like all dots. You know, make them like, like they're little flowers. Yeah, see? And the more of these you do, and the more of these you add, the more the picture is going to come together. Because remember, we haven't even added the daisies yet. Maybe even right over here, there's some that's sticking right out of the jar. Okay. It looks like a lot. Now we're going to take, pull some black back in. And maybe there's a branch that comes here with some. And who knows, maybe there's some branches over here. And there's something that sticks up. Maybe it comes back over there. That's fine. There you go. And that's just the general idea. I mean, this is... This is really what it is. You could you could create something that come behind here. Maybe there's a whole new set of uh, little baby's breaths that's sticking up from behind this one over here. Maybe something comes from here like that. And here's another one, another set of branches. Now just take your brush and add a few little baby's breaths to that. You're getting the idea, right? That's it. And you see how much fun that was? And now you have all of these baby breaths waiting for your main course or your main flower. So why don't we just go in? Let's get that started. Now before we peel off, now we're going to paint. Now we're actually going to paint the jar. Now you, for some of you, you already have the outline. So let's just, let's just trail off from that. Let's just come here. Go right over the outline. And gonna start to create the jar. Now I'm just gonna go with the side outline and the top mouth outline for you first. Okay, now watch this. I'm gonna say that the flowers are in front, so I'm not gonna paint through them, I'm gonna paint around them. So I'm just gonna come here and just go around like that. Go behind flowers not going to paint through them because that would take away from the illusion. And then we have to make a mouth. So let's just make the mouth, this whole thing here. Now this mouth, I'm going to actually come across the front. Now I'm going to paint over the flowers. That mouth pushes everything back. Now let's just say that there's a little bit of a twist to this jar. So maybe there's another line that's just right in the back that goes like so. Maybe make this come a little thicker. Like that. And then let's do the front where we have the twist. So maybe there's a little bit of a twist that comes right here and right here. And then maybe there's even a little bit of a circular shape like that. And then let's pull some lines close to the edge, straight down. And maybe break a line that goes like this. Maybe even a line that comes in the middle here. So there. That's going to represent our jar. And before we go too far, let's take some black and let's trim that off. So that we could have a little bit of a line that comes around the front again. That's black. A line that goes around the back. It's almost like we're creating an outline for the jar. And maybe there's a little bit of a twist that comes like this. Twist that comes like that. Maybe there's a little bit of a black line right here. And definitely, definitely pull a black line right along the edge over here. And voila, we have a jar. And just that easy, there's a jar. It's good enough. So add a little bit of extra lines over here. There. That's our jar. It's got its mouth. It's got the, all the flowers inside. Now we're going to peel up. Now the secret to the peel is you want to... Look at the spatula and grip it right about here. At any of these corners, you just want to pull up a little something. So stick it anywhere you can to get it started. Peel away. That's going to represent flower number one. 
Remember those lines that we created across? Now they're gonna look like they're behind flower number two. And over here, we're gonna call this one flower number three. Now this is another cool trick. I'm just gonna say it out loud, and then I'm gonna show you, and then you could do it any way that, excuse me, that you feel comfortable. You can actually leave this because this is already gessoed and acrylic painted and just paint all of the imagery around it. Or you can go in with a nice flat brush of white and paint all of this white before you fill it inside. We're going to leave it just like this. So what we're going to do now is take some yellow and we're going to put our little burst of yellow on these flowers. So here's the top part right here that makes this hump. So why don't we just come around here like that, circle this up a little bit and say, there's, there's the center daisy to that flower. Then we're gonna come over here and create a little bit of a button shape like that. And that's gonna represent the center part of this daisy. Swipe my finger off, take a little bit more yellow. You see this hump that's right here? We're gonna start right there. And then we're gonna make the center daisy circle like that. There. So now we have that part in and we're gonna come back to that after it dries a little bit, but we're gonna paint around and in the inside now. So let's get our script liner brush again. Let me just see if we could do it right now. Take some of this sienna and then just start putting in a series of dots. You know, this is the stuff that the bees like. This is what the bees come around for. It's like the pollen. It's gonna tap some color into that. Tap some more color into this one. Just little dots, just for, just for coloration. We're gonna tap a little bit of color into this one. See? Clean that off. Go into a little bit of white. And then we're gonna tap a little bit of white into those as well. This just gives a little extra coloration a little decoration to the flower itself. Just a few, just a couple, that's good. Now we're gonna take this brush and go right into the black. And remember, black is a very strong color, so be very, very careful. But basically what we wanna do is just go around the edges and just kind of tap a little edge. If it mixes and turns a little green, that's fine, but we want to try to keep it black. So I'm going to keep every now and then just going in, tapping some black, working my way around. I'm just resting the yellow into the white part of the flower. Let's do it over here too. Before we make the other parts, let's just tap. And by tapping, I just get an odd shape instead of just drawing a line. So we're going to be painting some lines in a minute. So I say have some fun tapping for right now. I'm just going to tap. Load up again. We're just decorating now. Tap around. We're like seconds away from completing our painting. Now we're just going to go and we're going to pull in some of these petal lines. Watch this. Just gonna come here, so you can see the little divots. The little divots are these little inside corners. That's really what I'm going for now. So I'll pull a little bit here, go to this one. Pull a little bit here, go to this one. See that? Then I'll go to this one, like that. This one, like that. Go to this one. Like that. And you see how I'm letting the brush not be like a complete line, which is which is kind of an illusion in and of itself. Just helps with the little skip. So let's do all of them really quickly. 
So I'm just going to come find the little divot spots. See how I purposely went in the other direction for that one. Staying like what they call the contour of the flower. And then there's another one right there. You see how it's starting to come together? Just that quick, just that easy. You have yourself some daisies in a jar. There. Now what I want to do is I want to add some lines kind of in between those. So I'm just going to take the brush and just pull in a few lines of different lengths so that they kind of are the back over here. See? See what I did there? Same thing. So I'm just going to come here, grab the brush, do a few, maybe a long one there, a few like this. Make sure you grab some color, you don't want it too dry looking. See? And now for the last one, I'm going to grab a little bit. Yeah. And that's my daisies. Done. Well, I hope you had fun. I know I did. Um, there's a lot of things you could do to these flowers. There's a lot of ways you could paint anything. My job is just to try to show you an easy way to do it and have some fun with it. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of black and a touch of some white. And I'm going to make a very, 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 very light gray. And again, you don't have to do this part. This is not something that you really have to do. But I like to take a little bit of this gray color and I like to dance a little bit inside each of these flowers just for coloration purposes. See how light that is? It's so light you could hardly see it, but it will show up later when you're looking at the end product. It just has a little highlight to the white. So it's not just a plain straight white and I'm just painting right inside the flower shape just a little bit of a grayish coloration in the shape and there now my painting is done well I hope you had fun I know I did it was a great painting project and I look forward to painting with you guys again and remember the stencil part wasn't necessary for everyone but it's something that I try to do especially for my older group um, because they're very special to me and I want them to have the ease and comfort and some of you uh, Might want to use it as a way of helping you. There'll be one in every kit so you can you know share it with everyone or You know have it for yourself. So thank you again for painting with us. I look forward to painting with you again till next time. Bye. Bye